playing the Radical Latino Show. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands in the air for New York's Radical. Oh, Latino is taking you to another level. Yeah! What up, my people? Welcome back to another episode of the Radical Latino Show. It's your host, the Radical Latino, aka number 25 on all Latin podcasts, aka Mr. Unsuable, for the ninth week running. What is popping? I hope everybody is doing great. I hope everybody is week is great. I hope everybody is a okay with everything. I want to give a big shout out to all the new subscribers, all the new supporters. Huge shout out to everybody and everything around you. You know what I'm saying? Um, a lot of things have happened. Oh my God, this week has been crazy. A lot of things has happened this week. Um, let me give you guys an update right quick very quickly a disclaimer i want to this i just want to give a disclaimer out right quick um a couple of days ago i uploaded a a video on my youtube channel of a asian man uh basically harassing a black guy a black man black kid right um uh, while he's you know vlogging doing youtube videos or whatever the case is um somebody brought it to my attention i saw it on uh, on my instagram and i got completely outraged um i took the context of what happened i didn't even do that much research on it i put out the title i made the title but the whole thing happened less than five minutes i didn't even put it in commentary for the video i just put it out there on the description i i wrote what what happened a very small description and i even gave an update on it right and i went to bed i went to bed and i woke up with a slew of crazy ass comments a slew of insane type of comments i'm like god damn my mistake was that i took that video and at the end of the video i didn't put my commentary on it that's my mistake i thought i did so in the description but i end up finding out not end up finding out but i know for a fact that a lot of people don't read the description at all a lot of people don't read the description and i saw that i saw i saw the video the comments on the video, the, it w- you would have thought, on the, based on the comment se- on the comment section, you would have thought the, uh, my channel was Antonio Batista's channel. The way the comments were sounding, and I was completely horrified. A bunch of white supremacist code words like the Asian dude is based. Um, no joggers allowed. Joggers is a code word for black folks. Um, the, the, the Asian dude said the no N word zone and you kept on seeing NNZ, 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 which just became a new code word for these white supremacists out here. And I said, yo, what the hell? What just happened right now? As I record this podcast, that joint has 17,000 views. It's been going viral, right? It's been going viral. Um, not only on Twitter, but on Instagram and on YouTube and stuff like that to the point where YouTube is like su- trying to suppress it, but it's being shared so much. You know what I'm saying? And I said, yo, what the fuck is going on? I literally had to go to the video itself and put in all these little racist code words and most of the, the racist usernames down manually manually so it could start self-deleting comments guess what some of them still got through and i had to manually you know delete 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 because the shit was insane the shit was insane one thing that i did know 
when it comes to these white supremacists, they all follow the same code words. This is something we got to understand. One of the code words was if you randomly put a random N, a, the letter N, just the letter N, somebody already knows they got to put an I below that comment. And then somebody has to put a, a G below that comment, another G, so they could spell out the N word. You know what I'm saying? They already, they already know that. And that's what I kept on seeing. I said, what is, the, what is going on here? So I've, I went and did some more digging the day I, I the next day I woke up. I just, I didn't think that was going to get that much traction. I did a lot of digging, not that much digging. I went to the analytics of the video and I even posted on my community page and on my Instagram. Come to find out the majority of these people who are coming from, um, you know, to, to my channel or people from 4chan, Reddit, and all these little white supremacist websites. And I said, oh, that's why I'm blowing up. This is the reason why it's blowing up, right? Apparently, um, I was part of the, the, the Cooley, the Coley, Coley, Cooley. Apparently that's, that's, uh, the black version of 4chan. I, I didn't even know it, but apparently I was there or something like that. I don't know. Um, but this, so this is where all these people were coming. And this tells me something which I already knew, but it confirmed it that these white supremacists from Antonio's group or whoever, they watch my shit. they have subscribed to me and they watch my shit. That says a lot. That says a lot because look at the power that these motherfuckers mobilize in. And basically all of this shit is online. They will not dare say this shit outside of the internet. You know what I'm saying? All these jogger diffs, base that, come on now. Come on now. And for those who don't know, the YouTuber who recorded that, I put him in the description. That dude should be getting the 20,000 something views. Not me. The reason why I even put it up because I, I wanted, I wanted to, uh, and I even wrote in the description. Um, which I, again, it's my mistake. Cause I should have clarified. The only reason why I put it up is because I want to show people that white supremacy is a, I'm a sound like truth teacher. Jesus Christ. My a white supremacy is a mind virus. White supremacy is a idea that you believe in. You don't have to be white to practice or be a puppet or a collaborator to white supremacy. You don't have to be, and that's the dangerous part about it. That because we walk around with people who look like us and we think and assume these people think like us and come to find out, they'll just stab us in the back, calling us all type of N words. And, and this is something very interesting I've noticed. Very interesting. When it comes to Latin want to be white supremacist, Asian want to be white supremacist, Indian want to be white supremacist or any non white ethnic group that is a want to be white supremacist. Their goal to is always hating on black folks. Black, black is wrong. Black, 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 black. You know what I'm saying always hating on black folks, black, 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 always hating, always hating, always hating, always hating. I found that very interesting because either two things or a few things is happening. Either they hate their blackness. So they have to basically project, you know what I'm saying? Because they want to get in good stances with white mommy and white daddy, or in order to get accepted in this group that you know that you're not a part of, but you want to be a part of. As Rancho says, the pygmy crowd, because let's be honest, Rancho's a pygmy. You know, he's a Spaniard pygmy, you know? Um, when, when, when it comes to something like that, they have to go up and beyond to prove it to white mommy and white daddy. See, I, I could stab my own people in the back. You know what I'm saying? I could stab my own people in the back. I could definitely go up and beyond, you know, from, um, go up and beyond with the oppression that you taught me. You know what I'm saying? 
and it go and that's very interesting very very interesting you know because it shows that type of mentality in different aspects as we see certain groups of people on either youtube or on platforms that some certain individuals have very very interesting which well before it leads me into my next thing i wanted to say first we have to understand that the we gotta understand we gotta understand that um all asians are not like this okay all asians are not like this this asian individual does not represent all asians around the community i so happen to not find a down to earth asian dude or, or girl who's actually down with the cause i know i haven't found that to me is very rare the only person i'm getting close to finding is like china mac or something like that but i haven't found a, a down to earth china mac dude around my circle you feel what i'm saying i haven't you know what i'm saying uh i've all my encounters with asian people were never good we're never good i even dated an asian you know i had an asian girlfriend and her parents uh you know thought i was selling drugs uh thought that i was gonna lead her daughter down the wrong path thought that i was gonna get her pr well which you know that <laughs> that <laughs> that happened but she took care of that shit without letting me know but it is what it is but they automatically had all these negative notions of me not only her parents but her family and not only her family but the asian community around her most of her asian friends even thought so literally one of her asian friends came up to me and asked me where i could get cocaine from like what i don't fucking know I don't know where you could get that shit from, you know, Darrell is down the street, but I don't know where you could get that from. <laughs> yeah. That's my man Darrell. Don't worry about it. He got you. No, um, I'm like, I'm like, yo, what the hell you police? What the fuck? Don't try asking me questions like that. You know what I'm saying? So I just want to put that out there. Not all Asian people are like that. You know what I'm saying? I, I'll, I go out on the limb and said, most of them are like that, but not all of them most of them so we gotta we gotta be very clear what's happening but but my main point of putting that video out there was not to cause the vision my mistake was not being clear enough not only on the description but not putting a commentary audio thing right after that but um i just want to show that you can still be a white supremacist with those white supremacists talk well not not no let me rephrase that you can be a wannabe white supremacist. You could be a white supremacist collaborator with those type of talking points, um, you know, and still having, you know, that type of ideology and the system backing you up when you're harming black folks. That's the main thing that I wanted to basically cover, you know, with that being said, with that being said, um, Hold on, Thir Jesus, 13, I took 13 minutes talking this BS. Um, so with that being said, it, it, sex it segues me to, um, to this other part of the, of the topic, um, Rancho. So for those who don't know, um, Rancho had a, uh, an interview with Viva and again, the, you know, he mentioned my name here and there, but it doesn't really matter. I just wanted to talk about some of the BS that he basically said. Again, that guy is nowhere different, no way different from Antonio whatsoever. Let's not get it fooled. Um, he 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 wants he's big he bigs up Spanish and Spaniards the same way Antonio does. Let's keep it real. You know what I'm saying? Let's keep it 100% real. So with that being said, right? With that being said, um, remember when I just, I just spoke about, you know, the Asian dude, how he 
you know, um, when those, these type of non-white people want to, you know, regurgitate these white supremacist talking points, they could be upfront or covert about it. Either way, you got to pick up the certain nuances or certain clues. And with him, it's the same way. You know, you got to big up Spain, 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 because that's the identity that he actually believes in. You know what I'm saying? And the thing is, with that identity comes the subjugation and the mentality of, okay, black folks are under me and we're different than black folks and all this other stuff. And for those who might be saying, no, 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 well, e even in his Dominican podcast, he even said that to the uh, Dominican Renaissance, hey, listen, I share the same ideas with you about the Haitians. You know what I'm saying? Come on now. Come on now. You know what I mean? Let's let's keep it. Let's keep it real. You know what I'm saying? Let's keep it real. But there was a couple of things that he said in that interview, which I've noticed besides the whole part of him, you know, sucking up to Spain, besides that whole part of him sucking up to Spain, he li likes to twist history and cherry pick certain situations that the Spaniards were good to our ancestors, right? So he was saying things like, well, the Spanish married their own and gave um, some of the people, listen to the words, some of the people their rights, right? The fact that the Spanish even had to give these people their rights says something. It says that they were under control of Spain. That means they were under subjugation, right? They, these Spaniards raped the majority of the women. The only women that they actually got married to is the ones of higher class so they could steal the land. That's all it was. This is history. This is not my opinion. This is not my feelings. This is history and this is fact. All right. This is the same way how when the Britons used to treat their black slaves in America, this is the same way how they used to come in rape the women and actually because to be completely honest the indigenous women they didn't even get close to that but the, the slave the african slaves they would put them in high positions up in the plantation there would be a house slave they would either be the mammy or the caretaker whatever the case is i could i could i could be the a, a black equivalent to say well look at that the, the British were good because they were married their slaves and they would do that. Come on now. This is what this dude is doing. And he talks about, well, if the Spaniards were so racist, then how come they gave certain people, um, what was it? Certain people, uh, you know, a town, a all black town, huh? If you don't know your history, then you basically would be caught out there. That's not true. 100%. The Spaniards did give a whole town that were black. Yes, but they had to be subjugated under the crown and they couldn't do anything that they wanted to do. So it's like saying, okay, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you a, you know, it's like saying, I'm gonna give you a town, a town, but this town, you, we're going to call a prison. You got little jobs in the prison, but you know, at the end of the day, you can't leave the town unless I want you to, you know, it's like that equivalent. You know what I'm saying? So that whole thing didn't make any sense, you know? And then he goes and says about, um, how come I'm not on Twitter, but radical and Antonio is, which is a lie because Antonio has been suspended off of Twitter because he's racist. Just like, I don't know, Noel, AKA Rancho, you know what I'm saying? The reason why I'm on Twitter is because I'm not attacking people. I'm not, I'm not saying no racist cold words or anything like that. All his little buddies be saying no little white supremacist cold words. Base this, base that. Jogger this, jogger that. Come on now. You, you don't, you don't. Come on. And, and he, the little white supremacist go jam. Come on now, jam. Let, come on, come on now. Let's, let's, let's keep it. Let's keep it a hundred. Let's keep it a hundred. You know what I'm saying? Let's keep it a hundred. So with that being said, right? 
enough uh, enough giving this uh, this clown any attention. Um, if anybody caught Cynthia G's uh, last uh, live, I was all the way towards the end of the live, to be completely honest. So uh, she was talking about Anto not only Antonio, but she was talking about uh, Latin men and how Latin men, you know, or mixed men or whatever the case is, um, you know, have anti-blackness or whatever, which is a good conversation. I wish I was a part of it. But I, I said my piece towards the end and then she's like, yeah, if you want to have an interview, we could definitely have an interview. So hopefully that is going to happen in the future, right? Now, before I get into my interview, you know what I'm saying? I gotta get, I gotta get into my interview. You know what I'm saying? Um, before I get into my interview, I want to read the comments for last week's episode. And boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy was last week's episode of fucking doozy how christianity is a fake religion jesus christ i i knew it was going to be controversial but shit really guys this shit is literally as the time i'm recording this 18 thumbs up and 18 thumbs down jesus christ oh my god so I'm like, okay, it's uh, it's getting the message out there, but shit, I knew it was gonna be controversial, but goddamn. So I even had some people hit me up, you know, because of it. You know what I mean? So Keys says, I don't get why people worship that picture of the white guy they call Jesus. <laughs> That's a European King, um, King James. He forced people to make him the face of Jesus, which is, which is true, you know? So that's been historically proven, you know what I'm saying? Um, one of my trolls, Pablo Emilio, he says a lot of your topics are not related to la Latino issues slash representations, not our business. Umar Johnson question mark don't know latinos that know who he is well a lot do a lot of latin people do um the the fact that you got four thumbs up on that dumb shit and that dumbass comments tells you that they do know you know what i'm saying um and these these topics should be related because you have to you have to uncolonize your mind to actually understand what the hell you know i'm even speaking about and just have an open mind, you know what I'm saying? Um, ATL says, you know that you can't be a real Latino unless you bow down to the Roman Empire. That means being a Roman Catholic. Bend the knee, radical. Bend the knee. <laughs> yeah, that's basically what these people were trying to say. The, their criteria of being a Latin person is introducing religion, which is the stupidest thing ever. Which is the most dumbest thing I've ever even heard. You know what I'm saying? Uh, religion doesn't make you an ethnicity, you dumb fucks. What? No. It's a combination of a lot of things. But that doesn't make you ethnicity. Come on now. Um, Julia says, what do they do with all... Oh, oh yeah, because he's talking about Umar Johnson. Yeah, what do they do with all that money? Yeah. Johnny Mills says, uh, radical Latino, be careful. White supremacy along with their token black and Latinos are coming for you. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Um, doom music says you lucky you are in the 12th century. Millions died because they didn't accept Christianity. Bow down to Christianity. <laughs> oh my God. It's, it's true. It's hundred percent true. 100% true. I'm not going to bow down. No. No. Decolonize Alexis says, I agree. Christianity is fake. Damn. All right. Shout out to Decolonize Alexis. You know, shout out to that. Um, Got a couple of trolls here. Franken on front. Wait, hold up. Franken on front, man. Aren't you supposed to be changing your YouTube channel or something like that? Or... Or on December something or January something is gonna be a new YouTube channel, man. Like, uh, make your last video promoting that, bro, so people could go to that channel. 
So uh, go subscribe to Franken on Front, man. You know what I mean? Franken on Front says, very informative podcast, Radical. I left the church a really long time ago, and I realized that most preachers are con artists. One's relationship with the Most High is supposed to be a personal one and shouldn't require some third party intervention to lead you to him. More, more like they're trying to lead their way into your wallet and I wasn't having it. And he goes on, which is 100% true. Mo- most of the, listen, the, when I, what, what solidified my stance about, you know, just, you know, religion in general is when I saw preachers having their own reality show and I said, come on now. Are you, are y'all serious? Are y'all serious? Come on now. So just, just seeing that right there, I said, oh, hell no. My man, literally there was one preacher that had, that was flying in the G6. And he literally got to the congregation. Was it a G6 or a G4? Or I don't know which one it was. He got to the congregation and said, God told me that you guys need to donate because I cannot be seen flying on the G6. God told me I need to be flying on the G8. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, oh, hell no. Are you serious? This whole shit is a con, man. Every church has gotten that. Oh, uh, you need to donate, 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 so we could get the roof fixed or get the extra uh, uh, church, you know, uh, put up or whatever the case is. Every preacher has gotten into that con, man. Every preacher that that renovation con. Come on now. But lastly, Rolls Royce <laughs> says, if I take the whole Bible literally and obey it. Either I'll wind up in an asylum or on death row. (laughs) That's a fact. That's a fact. Uh, A lot of a lot of people don't think like that, but you know, we gotta be more open-minded. We gotta be more aware of certain things. We gotta be more astute of our surroundings, you know, because we can't be caught lacking out here. You feel me? Anyway, with that being said, listen. This guy that I'm about to introduce, wonderful brother. I don't know why the fuck he doesn't have his own platform in his own um, page or whatever the case is. Um, I'm definitely have his Instagram down below and I want you guys to harass him every single day to either put a podcast out or get a YouTube channel out, at least talk to the people 10, 15, 30 minutes, you know, a week or whatever, you know, put your thoughts out there, make a topic or whatever the case is. And just because this brother is a a seed of light, a seed of information. And I feel like he's losing, he he's doing us a disservice for, and doing the people a disservice for not bringing that information out there, you know, and I, I just, uh, I just, uh, I don't know. I just, uh, I, I, I have to, I gotta keep it real. I'm like, yo, dude, you gotta, you gotta do something because you can't just hold this shit out for the people. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, without further ado, um, this is my interview with me and styles. All right. I hope you guys enjoy it. Peace. Yeah. Uh, what up my people? Welcome back to another episode of the radical Latino show. Now today. You know, I always bring you guys special guests. You know what I'm saying? I always bring you guys special guests. And it's always, always a pleasure to bring special guests with knowledge, with integrity. Damn, I can't even say say it right. Integrity. And actually, a a brother that actually knows what he's talking about because everything that he says is solidified in truth. So with that being said, I wa- I like to welcome all of y'all is Cell Styles. What's going on, bro? Peace, family. How you doing, bro? Not much. Listen, thank you for even being a part of this, bro. Thank you so oh, much. Nice. Thank you so much. You know, no, no, no. um, I uh, I was meaning to to get you on earlier, but you know, other things came up, and then when I saw you on Tina's thing, shout out to Xtina, by the way. When oh, I saw you on Tina's thing, you were hitting 
you were dropping jewels, bro, that I even saw her kind of stunned. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, it was a, it was a good build. It was definitely a good build. It was fun. It was fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I and I want and I want to bring it. I br- I want to bring the same energy and the same knowledge here. So, um, with that being said, first of all, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, I mean, <clears throat> both my peoples they're from uh they're from Borinquen, they're from Puerto Rico. Um, my mom she's from the Bronx. My pops he's uh he's from Jersey City because they they both moved to uh the Northeast when they were real young. I think my mom she was like maybe six my pops when he was like four so mainly they know the city they know the city more than they know the island um my father's side was more you know connected to the island and i grew up with him for the most part of my adolescence um you know but for for me personally though i was always up and down the east coast from virginia to north carolina to florida <clears throat> part of self i even uh lived in mississippi for a little bit um, but home base for me personally is, you know, New York City, Jersey City area. Um, right now, I, I, I drive trucks in the southeast, so I'd be all in Virginia, North Carolina, Georgia, Florida, and all that. And um, you know, oh, you you were like in meth country, bro. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah, I be mean, I be all, all around, man. I love I love I love the open road and all that, but you know, I think I'm gonna hang that up pretty pretty quick here, so, uh, shortly. But um yeah, other than that, man, you know, I DJ, I'm a uh advocate, participant in the cultural practice of hip hop, you know. Um I, I I love, you know, reading, learning, observing, you know, and just, you know, adding on any way I can. That's a sub, that's a sub. So what made you what what made you wanna start uh DJing or as our um grandmasters would say, what made you wanna start one of the um elements of hip hop? You know, the first elements of hip hop is DJ, you know? Well, what made you wanna 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 uh do that? Well for me in Jersey City, we we was always like we was always really heavy on like the um the art of blending and the art of mixing. It was like, it was like a city thing. Like we're out in Newark, you know, they did the, the Jersey club that came up from Baltimore and, you know, I rock with all that, you know what I'm saying? But, um, I, I just, we, we, we was really heavy on the culture, the, the, the DJ scene and the production scene in Jersey city. We preserved a part of, uh, of blending and, and like old school, you know, turntablism, um, for, for a minute while people were fading into the CDJs and, you know, as, as the art was starting to die out and all that, we kind of preserved that for a while. So, you know, from cats like DJ Nelly Nell, you know, 007, you know, um, these are like DJ Semage. These are all brothers from around the way. And um, I just grew up on the mixtapes. I always loved it. And, you know, as soon as I was able to afford to get my own turntables, I, I was about 19. But I always like messed around with other people's equipment from here and there around the way and all that so you know that was the main job. just 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 the overall uh influences in the neighborhood mm, mm-hmm. mm. Yeah, did you yeah. uh did you uh did you dj any uh, like great battles no nah, I, I ain't never compete in a battle i mean i've been in like cyphers like little scratch cyphers and all that um and i you know i, I do little things like you know i probably do like a bar here and there or, do like little events. I, I'm you didn't a, you didn't throw a record from like across the room and land it on your mixer and all that. Nah, nah, and then, my my main gif with the turntable. I like to scratch. You know, I mean, I like mixing and blending and doing my yeah. thing too. But I, I I'm a, I'm a scratch nerd, so I could just sit up in my room for hours and listen to mad instruments gotcha. and then just do my thing. What what are what are your thoughts on the whole DJ game now? Because now. People call themselves DJs, but they in reality they just playlist artists. You know what I mean? So yeah, I mean, what are your I mean, thoughts on that? Art, there's an art to everything. Like you know, what I do is turntablism, and I do you know, um, and I I, I I appreciate like the the uh, the foundation of it because it's a cultural practice. You know what I'm saying? From from when you took the break beat and you take a record and you know you you take that part of the record and you keep it going. Like I learned from the ground up because. It, to me, it's like it's like a Muslim going to Mecca. It's like you know you gotta walk and talk in the in the shoes of the forefathers and be in the presence. And it's like you know it's a it's a uh, it's a, it's a cultural preservation or something. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of people gotta tune with that. But that's a hip hop thing. DJing is more bigger than hip hop. You know what I'm saying? It's been around before hip hop. 
it's just one of our elements the way we do it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So if, if you're a press play DJ or you like DJing off the laptop or with an iPad and you could, you know, you got a good, you know, repertoire of, of music and you can keep the party going, you know, how to interact and you're cool. You just, as long as you don't try to, you know, fake the funk and because, I mean, dudes do that. They, they'll go on YouTube and take yeah. a, like a, a, a whole... um a whole like 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 a pre-recorded to somebody else's and, and yeah. they called out for that. So like the, the culture is still very very alive and and dudes will will, will will tug your coat and point you out real quick. So, yeah, like like these uh I call them I call them play and pause DJs. You know what press, I'm saying? Yeah, like press play DJs. Yeah, play yeah, yeah. Them. Like I you know DJ iPod. You know what yeah. I'm saying? A yeah, DJ yeah. <laughs> DJ playlist. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. The, I don't I don't I don't respect those. I want I want like like. For what I'm hearing from you, you actually do come from that era um, where it was authentic. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's, there's cats who get into it in, in, in today's time. Like, you could be a dude who's born in 1997, and if he really loved the culture, he's going to go back. He's, he's going to get the turntables. He's going to get some battle records. He's going to, you know, he's going to teach himself how to do it, even though he has so much of an advantage versus people who were doing it in the 70s. They didn't have MIDI controllers or computers. You know what I'm saying? So, like, if you're really true to it, you're going to want to learn how to do it the right way and then incorporate all the technology that you, it comes along with it now. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Because then it just intensifies your whole set and makes you that much of a better DJ. Yeah. yeah. So so where do you get the name Self Styles? Oh, um, well, I got that from um, when I was, you know, getting knowledge of self. You know, there was always the saying, Self Style Wisdom. And um, so I... I pretty much, I just kind of liked it. You know what I'm saying? It just felt like it, it, it represented me because I was always an oddball and no matter what sci-fi I was in, it was just, I was always different. I always wanted to stick out and do different things. And so, you know, that it just suited me. You know what I'm saying? I like, I, I like the, I like, I like the, uh, the, the mag, the ma uh, magnetation of that, uh, of that word, self-style wisdom. It just always resonated with me. Mm. Like, so, mm. yeah, that's, I that's think, where it comes from. I think that's this is the name of the episode, self uh, self styles wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that so so uh so growing up in, in in that type of environment, you know, hip hop and all that, you know, um, you know, the elements or whatever the case is, did you, yeah. you find did, what what are your thoughts on certain people saying that um only black people invented hip hop when in reality it was black and latin people that invented it what is your thought I mean that? that's they, they just they don't know history you know what i'm saying they don't know history i mean it is it is a black culture because i you know i i see us as black people so you know what i'm saying i mean facts, but facts. Bodies, was, bodies was there there was even some dominicans and not a lot of dominicans but there were a few there like my uncle i don't know if you know who Joey Gonzo is Nah, Joe, nah. Joe, do the knowledge to Joey Gonzo, bro. He's got a, a book called Born in the Bronx, and he's one of the original. Uh, he's the first hip hop photographer. He has beautiful work, bro. I'm, I, I'm pretty sure you would appreciate it. Um, but he was around when everything was being manifested in in like 1978, 1979, when they were doing doing it in the parks, doing it at the school jams, doing like he was there taking pictures of everything. And you could see the, you know, the landscape of it when it was being born in front of your eyes. So you know, really, I mean, they, yeah, they, they just don't, they don't know history, and you know, really, it, yeah, that's. I mean, I, I don't feel no type of way either which way it goes because I just live it out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. A lot of people who come in the name of this of hip hop or they think they know what hip hop is. A lot of them dudes don't even know what hip hop is. You, they can't even name the five elements. Yeah, or, yeah. Saying? So that's like, that's true. See, a lot yeah. of people don't know like. You know, DJ, master of ceremony, uh, graffiti, break dancing, and knowledge. Exactly. Those are the, and, and knowledge those are the, 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 the knowledge is the, is yeah. the first element because you gotta have knowledge to do anything. That's true. And I think was it um I think Bombada uh, um uh, who what's his name um Bombada uh uh uh, uh what's his name again um A African African Bombada yeah he's yeah. the one that added that right. Well, not well. See, all right. Like the thing with African Bombada is is that all right, he he. Don't get me wrong. I ain't taking nothing away from African Bambada. Like he he did what he did. He's a, a a pioneer in the game. You know what I'm saying? But um, really, where they got that from was from 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 um, when when they was starting when they was starting up when he was putting it all together, they they uh the five percent came through and they kind of gave them a little bit of you know how to their structure. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of they they, they information aligns with, 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 with what they were teaching. So that that's I mean yeah. I, I don't know. 
I can't. I don't know if I could uh, uh, credit that to African Bambada. You understand what I'm saying? But, okay, all right, all right. But I mean, he was the one who spearheaded the whole Zulu nation. And my yeah. uncle Joey Gonzo, he was actually down with the Zulu nation. Really? Yeah, he bought it. His 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 father was um was Tito Fuentes' manager. Oh, get out of here! Yeah, so like you know, I mean, and yo, they'll tell you the stories. Of anytime you want to get to, the, you know, you want to study something, you go to the root, and these people are still alive. So yeah, you know what I'm saying? Sure. Like, it, 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 you, it, whether they got misplaced in the textbooks or not, you could always go and listen. I, listen, I I still got I still got Planet Rock on vinyl, bro. You know yeah, what I'm saying? You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, so 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 you know, like I I remember I I played that joint. You know, and my mom was like, Que eso, mijo? You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, I'm like, yeah, oh, this yeah. shit is hip hop, mom. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? So, um, so how did, how was your, uh, your, uh, childhood growing up in, um, it was in New York City, right? Well, I mean, I was all over the place. I was, okay. In, I, I lived in New York when I was probably like 13 to 15, something like that. I was living in Brooklyn. And then um, I went back to Jersey City for a few years. Like like the the the, the first uh, few years of my life, we was uh, in the military, and my pops got out. And then when my peoples got divorced, I was like maybe six years old. Then I actually went to Jersey City. Oh, okay, and got I, it. And got then it. that's when I started going, you know, back and forth, and all that. So I mean, but I mean overall, you know, traditionally, you know, you know, a single parent household. I was even with my pops. I was with my moms. My mom's had my sisters, so you know what I'm saying. I mean, it, it was a, it was a hell of an experience. I guess you could say. Gotcha, you know gotcha, I gotcha. From one extreme environment to another extreme environment versus, like when my peoples got divorced, I was living in Virginia, so. <clears throat> got it. I ain't really when I was a young young child, I had no real true concept of, of of race or anything like that. Like I remember being four years old, thinking that my dad was black and my mom was white. And I used to always want to be like my dad. I'm like, damn, why I got to be white? You know what I'm saying? Like, I never <laughs> think I'm like that. Four years old. And I was yeah. like, you know, I don't know, sudden in the air that I do. I was like, man, it's just, it's just like, it don't seem right. But then when I finally moved to Jersey City, then I put it together because I'm now around all my cousins all the time and I'm absorbing the culture up there. And then I'm like, oh, okay, I'm Puerto Rican. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Know, and then I had my uncle, my uncle, uh, my, my my big cousin, um, we actually got the same name and his father had the same name. We all had the same, you know what I'm saying? So they had to call his little, uh, my, my, my nickname was Manny. So, or well, Manny Moe. So it was little Manny, Manny Moe and his father was Big mm. Manny. He's mm. the one who started teaching me um, about like Dr. Pedro Campos and all that. And that was when I first got up there, because he, mm. as soon as I got up there, they started, you know, he's like, all right, you get Roberto Clemente, Hector Lao, yeah. and then I asked him, I remember, I, I was, we used to take us to school every day, and we had, he had a Puerto Rican flag, and he had a pin with Pedro Campos on there, I was like, oh, Theo, who's that? And then he just bombed me with who the hell he was, and then I remember just going to, like, the library in school, looking him up, and just being intrigued. Uh, struggle and all that, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah. And I'm, that was like in second grade, so you know, yeah. what I'm saying? that sparked something right there. You know what I mean? And I think that's very important for uh, some of our kids nowadays for us to be knowledgeable and yeah. give and give that power to our kids or or nephews or or kids around us because that is going to be the next generation. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, yeah. That's so, the target for me. Yeah. Greatest, you know, so I that's, really don't waste my time too much with adults and all that because adults are going to do what they do. When I, when I really get into a heavy bill or if I, you know, try to stay on my job and do what I'm supposed to do as a civilized person and teach people, I usually look for the youth. Anywhere from like 13 to 24, those are the people I want to be building with. You know what I mean? That's true. That's true. So, now, let me let me ask you. Um, <clears throat> uh, they, they uh, I, I saw you in part of a live stream that me and you were both on. Yeah, and you were spending some good shit. You know what I'm saying? You yeah, were spending I was some good that, shit. That, that, that was chaos. But yeah, no, yeah, 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 yeah. It was. It was a. Uh, it was a. Uh, it, it was. It was chaotic. Um, <laughs> and you were spending some good shit, which I was really feeling. But people kept on cutting you off, or whatever the case is. But what, yeah. somebody said something about they called you a New Yorican. Yeah. W would you consider yourself a New Yorican? Yeah, culturally, I guess you could say that. You know, I, I yeah, my father considered himself New Yorican. You know, 
Yeah, I would say so. I mean, all right, so, I'm going to argue with somebody who says I'm not though either. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So but so so what in your in your opinion, what do you think the beef is between island Puerto Ricans and New York Ricans? Is there a real beef or is this just something that certain individuals just, you know, concocted in their little messed up head? I mean, me personally and I live in Orlando, Florida. This is little Puerto Rico here. You know, we had like 22,000 22,000 Puerto Ricans moved here from the mainland within six months after Maria. And there was an exodus before that. And they always been going there. Like, I'm talking about, like, Orlando's like Puerto Rico. I work with these dudes from the island. I, I've never experienced that in real time. Maybe a little joke here and there. And you know what I'm saying? Usually, I tell them, I just say one thing to them. I say, oh, Papi, you got a kid? Yeah. Is your kid, is your kid Puerto Rican? Yeah. Then how the fuck am I not? You know, and I then they shut the, they usually shut the fuck up when 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 I yeah. that example. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then I all and then a lot of the times, I mean, when I see it online, you know, I just most of the time I believe it's trolls. I don't even think like some of them people are actually Puerto Rican. You know what I mean? Um, but I mean it's stupid. You know, I don't understand because it's definitely not coming from from up top in New York. You know all that. You know we we embrace the island. We love the island. You know what I'm saying? We, I mean. Historically speaking, if you do the knowledge, that's what it, the, the, the flag was designed. You know what I'm saying? It was designed in New York City. So, you know, ah, not ah, only that, now, because yeah, it was, ah. it was designed the same day the Cuban flag was designed. It was refugees that they were political refugees, had political asylum in New York City. It was a bunch of Cubans and Puerto Ricans who came together in New York City and designed their flags the same day. That's why they that's why they sister island. That's why they got the vice versa the colors. Really? Yeah. Really? Oh, so now, I didn't know that. So you look at that, right? And then you look at Sasa. I mean, I know you've seen El Cantante, no? You seen that of, movie? Of course. All right. They'll drop the Jews right there. Sasa is a New York sound. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's influenced by all like the Mambo and all that, but it was put together and orchestrated in New York City by Puerto Ricans who you know what I'm saying? Been, who've been coming to New York City. They've been making that migration since the 30s. You know what I'm saying? They, they've been a colony of the United States since 1917. You know what I'm saying? That's over 100 years. You know what I mean? So, mm. I mean, I don't understand. I mean, I guess, you know, maybe deep down inside, they mad. They feel like that we left them. You know what I'm saying? Left them out there for dead or something. I don't know. I try to make sense of it sometimes, but I don't see it in the real world. You know, like I said, joking around. But, you know what I'm saying? Like, they always give it up. It's like it's not like I'm not invited to the barbecue, you know, just because I'm from Jersey. And I don't speak, uh, you know, fluent Spanish. Like niggas still fuck with me, you know what I'm saying? Yo, my bad. Can I curse on you? On your, on yeah, your yeah, you can go. Right, you can yeah. curse as much as you want. Yeah, yeah, because you know we, 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 when I'm usually in the presence of women, I try to be a little bit more. Nah, like, I, 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 feel, I, feel you, I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. I got, I got maybe like three women listeners, bro. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> No, you can curse all you, bro. You can curse all you want. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, I mean, I don't know, bro. I, I don't, I don't. You know, I can't really, you know, pinpoint what that's about. You know, I know it's it's really idiotic on their behalf because, you know, they have to understand that we are their political um, machine. Like we, they have to speak to us. They don't have political power down there. They can't vote for the president. You know what I'm saying? But they could get drafted to go to war. You know what I'm saying? I don't mm. know if you're familiar with the history of Puerto Rico, bro. But mm. they, they see what happened was during the first great big war, that's World War I, all right, what happened was was the United States had, had took a referendum vote in Puerto Rico. And they asked them, do you want your own citizenship or do you want American citizenship? Overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly I think about maybe anywhere from 60 to 70. My, my numbers may be rough, but... Overwhelming, the majority of people said we want our own citizenship. Okay. Congress okay. said, "Nah, uh -huh. fuck all that. You're American <laughs> citizens." And then two months later, they started drafting Puerto Ricans to go to war in the first Great War. I got, mm. I got, I, my cousin did the ancestry shit. I got, I got like, like uh, draft cards for people in my family who went to go fight in this war. Were? Yeah. Yes, bro. The last Damn. draft, the last draft was the Vietnam War. They sent more Puerto Ricans to Vietnam than any state in the union. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And they came oh, back, my, and they oh, came my. back all heroin addicted and all that. Exactly. Yeah. We all we all know how that went down. And all while not having the power to vote, 
You know what I'm saying? Any Puerto Rican in the United States that's involved in politics is always referencing the island. Like, what is it? Can we? What's gonna favor the island? You know what I'm saying? I mean, they might, they might, you know, get involved with the with, with the stupid shit. But you know what I'm saying? Like, mainly, it's like if you're gonna like, you know, what are you gonna do for the island? And then you might be able to get my vote here in the United States because we're the ones that are able to, you know, engage. That's in a fact. Political That's power. a fact. Damn, bro. Damn, bro. That's yeah. why I say it's idiotic on their part. And like, I'm not shitting on them. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, those are my people. I got, you know, any Puerto Rican you meet in the United States, you know, I've never met a Puerto Rican who don't got you know, a grandma, a cousin, or uh, uh, somebody back in Puerto Rico. It's not like, you know, we've been here That's 100 years. We've been here 100 years and we don't know nobody back in the old country, like Italians or whatever. You know yeah. What I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, we barely tied to the island. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, you can't, you can't make that distinction. Just listen, because, listen, it, especially here in New York, you could definitely find out who's Puerto Rican because y'all motherfuckers are proud. Y'all will have like a coquille tattoo bro, or, or, a, a, or a flag tattoo somewhere. You know what I'm saying? Yo, you want me? No, let me break the science of that down to you. See? The reason why Puerto Rican people, because we're probably the number one people in the world that go hard for their flag. I'm not trying to be biased here, but I'm just yeah. speaking, I'm, 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 I'm speaking real. The reason why that is because you, there was a point in time where you could get up to 10 years for flying that flag. It used to be a, a illegal in the United mm. States to fly the Puerto Rican flag. So mm. it, it's kind of like an act of rebellion when we fly that flag. Because for so long, it's been purged by the United States because they've been trying to implement Anglo culture down there for so long, but it, it, it didn't work. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like, yeah. so, like, a lot of people went hard for that flag. That's why That's why that pot is instilled in us the way, at birth, my G. As soon as you're born, yeah. like, they tell you, here's a flag, go rep this shit. You know what I'm exactly. saying? Exactly. Here's so the like, flag, and he's a frog, and this is what you represent. <laughs> by yeah. the way, when you come home, the Ara- Arocon Gandula is going to be on the pot. <laughs> yo, yeah, and also, yo, I, I swear to God, I think uh, Dominicans and Puerto Ricans be drinking Maltas like crazy, son. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yo, that's yeah. like that's like beer before beer. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I remember when I was a kid. I used, that's why I used to say, like, "Yeah, I'm having my little kid beer right here." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's a fact, bro. That's a fact. Yeah. So, so all right. So. So so let me let me ask you then what what are um what are your thoughts on certain certain people saying that Latin people they usually classify as white Puerto Ricans usually classify as white and all that other mm-hmm. stuff what what do you say what do you think about that I mean it's true some of them do you know and some of them are white you know what I'm saying so like I mean I don't try to you know I try not to. To, to feed too much into that paradigm because I understand what that's about, what that does. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I let people leave people to their own vices. A lot of people do it for opportunity. I've met a woman from the Bahamas who is as black as my auntie, and she looked like she's from the Congo. You know what I'm saying? And she classified as white. And she was from the Bahamas. A lot of, a lot of people from the Caribbean do that. Is you know... They don't want to be associated with African Americans, and they taught that before they come here. A lot of people are programmed that way, you know what I'm saying? So like, but some of them people are like, I, I have an uncle who was who's a, who's born in Jersey City, raised in Jersey City, and he does it for uh for for job opportunities. And I'm like, yo, you crazy, bro? Why are you feeding their numbers? I don't understand it, but that's what he does. You know, that's what people do. So me personally, I just learn to take a step back and just let let people do what they want to do because you know. It's, it's, it's not like it's something new. It's gotcha. been going on for a very long time. Gotcha, gotcha. So, so let me let me ask you let me ask you this because it's, it's going to probably piggyback from that first question. Mm-hmm. Um, what what are your thoughts on certain Latin people being racist against Black folks? Ah, uh, the one I think that's another thing that's nothing new. I mean, I don't, I don't, I ain't gonna say say I don't understand it because I I do understand it. You know, it's uh, like. It's inherited in the system. We can never get away from that until we totally redo it. You know what I'm saying? Or if we disattach from this particular system that we're a part of. You know what I mean? Until we, until it's like, all right, humans throughout civilization, throughout time, have been through monarchs, have been through feudalism, have been through chattel slavery, and now we're here doing what we're doing in the modern age. But all of these 
you know, or these infrastructures have, have, you know, byproducts of the last. Meaning, you know, so we still have a leader. We call him the president, whether he's, you know, he's, I mean, he's not as sovereign as the king. He doesn't hold as much weight, but we still have that infrastructure. You know what I'm saying? So the way our societies are designed, they're based off of racial laws. We start operating off of, you know, I don't know if you're familiar with the paper bull acts, but, you know, that goes all the way back to the Catholic Church. And that pretty much... Explain it. Explain what it is. Explain what it is. The Papal Bull Acts is pretty much what gives them jurisdiction over enslaving people for not being Christians and pretty much being black. It's pretty much just where, mm. you know, like, as far as the legalities of going, you know, taking black people as prisoners of war and kind of embedding them into the system, like, like, like a doctrine that the Catholic Church put out and pretty much that, you know, gives them jurisdiction to be able to, you know, go out there and enslave people who aren't Christians. It started... It pretty much... It all really goes back to like the wars with like the Moors and the Catholics, you know what I'm saying? And they've been operating off of that, off of that, off of that law, in in the realm of um, international law, or, or, or uh, I forget the, the the exact title. But if you if you go back and you do like the research to paper boy acts, it pretty much that's like where we can trace like the chattel slavery and how pretty much how it all started. And how they're still mm. pretty much operating off. It's just like no different. Right, are you familiar with the Monroe Doctrine? Are you familiar with that? Um, um, some some parts of it, not the whole thing. All right. Well, the Monroe Doctrine is like a racist ass, you know, policy that the United States put out there, saying that Latin America is our backyard and we'll do what is it as we please. They're still operating off of those codes. Mm. You see what I'm saying? So like, my whole my like when I when I take a step back and I analyze how the world is operating. And how 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 it how 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 everybody you know is pretty much on. It's like all right, you could go to China, right? And China's supposed to be a communist country, and Russia's supposed to be a communist country. Yet they still have a GDP. Yes, they still engage in the monetary system. They still scale things on a capitalistic level. You see what I'm saying? So it really yeah. don't matter what you're doing over there. This is how the world's getting down. They have a world bank, and they go to country to country and exploit resources and give you loans and put you in a hole and. You know, it's pretty much like that how it is here on a on a on a massive scale, on a massive yeah. level. You know what I'm mm. Now mm. when I talk when I when I talk this shit, a lot of people say, Oh, you're a fucking socialist or you're a communist. Like, nah, I'm not none of that. I'm just I'm just yeah. observing what's going on and showing <laughs> you how this shit here is like playing musical chairs. So, so always gonna be left out dry. So That's so you're so you're saying like the the Latin people who do fall into that whole racist paradigm is just uh being uh being fooled and being played, right? I mean, yeah, but everybody is. Everybody. Mm. Is. It's, it's like at the, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it really like if you're going to get down with the cause then, you know what I'm saying, you could get in. You know what I mean? But the reason why it's all based off of racism is because all right, see, the thing is is that the Anglos had enough time to watch the Spanish and where they went wrong. You see what I'm saying? Meaning, yeah. all right, in a democracy, what? The majority rules, right? right? Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so why do you think they so hell-bent on controlling the numbers? Because they understand that they're a recessive people, and they learn that through the errors of the Spaniards. That's true. The Spaniards, it didn't matter how many times they get these Spaniards to come over here and try to mix in. Anytime you mix in with an original person, it's going to be an original baby. Meaning yep. black is the dominant thing in the gene pool. They're yep. recessive people. You know what I'm saying? It's no, it's like, like if you look at the birth rates, they're at a 0% birth rate. And they have yeah. all the odds in their favor. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's more, now, it's you more look, deaths than the births, yeah. Now, you could look you could look at the black community and say, all right, well, in, during slavery, these motherfuckers was damn near 30 to 40% of the population. Okay, now you fast forward to today, they're only about 11 to 14 percent of the population when every other ethnic group has risen. That tells you right there, just by looking at the numbers, it's a conscious effort to keep the numbers down. You know what I'm saying? Mm. This is why you have Planned Parenthood in every ghetto. This is why you have a yeah. gun store in every ghetto. This is why they yeah. push the shit in our music to belittle our women and act like animals and do all the other third. You know what I'm saying? Because they try to control the numbers. Yeah, you know yeah, yeah. Mm. But, but so I mean, at the end of the day, it's like it's it, it's really not no secret. It's like this is like you know, been going on for a while. You know what I'm saying? We we're at a turning point though. Not only here in the United States, but everywhere around the world. You know, pre-corona, like I don't know, like I keep my ear to the ground, bro. So not only am I studious in history, you know what I'm saying, but I I watch Al Jazeera. 
I watch uh, Russia Today. I watch Rush Limbaugh. I watch Democracy Now. I watch domestic news, international news. I like to know what the fuck's going on all around the world. Facts. Because, because I, I I proclaim the whole planet to be my home. You know what I'm saying? Facts. Facts. So what I'm saying is, is that before Corona and all this shit was going on, yo, the whole world was in an uproar. Chile was wilding out. Hong Kong was wilding out. They were wilding out over there in fucking Paris and London. And I'm thinking, like, damn, why, why we ain't wilding? Like, that's what we do best. We wild. Like, we, you know what I'm saying? We, yeah. we the one who started all this riot and shit, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and then, and then Corona, and then, 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 then I'm like, oh, shit, now we fall in line. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, like it's not just us, bro. The whole world is pissed and mad. Like, yo, this just got to stop because people yeah. are starving. People are dying. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, now you said something very interesting in uh, Tina's thing that resonated with me very heavily. All right, what was that? You know what I'm saying? Um, the way you the way you you uh, perceive yourself, the way you identify, because you say um, you don't like saying the word Hispanic, but you 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 use it for other people to understand it, or Latin, yeah. Latino, so you, but you use it for other people to understand it. So, so my question is, how do you identify? Why do you identify as that? And also on top of that, um, what do you think Latin people should identify as? Um, well, how I see myself. As personally, I see myself as black. I'm the original man. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's, I, I, I don't. You want me to break down the science? How would I? How I broke it down on that Go ahead, bro. Go I, ahead. So, so when I say I'm black, I'm not necessarily saying that I'm phenotypically, you know, Negro or anything like that. And for anybody who gonna get, you know, touchy about that word, that's not my language. That's the language of anthropologists, geneticists, and science. You know what I'm saying? So let's get that very clear. Preach, you know brother. I mean? <laughs> so, so you know what I'm saying. So, um, so when I say I'm black, I'm simply saying that you know what I'm saying that I'm from the essence of of, of everything. You know what I'm saying. Like if you take all the colors in the in, in the in, in the crayon box and you put them all and you just you know you, you blend them all together, you're gonna get black. You know what I'm saying. That's mm. what origin of everything. Oh wait, are you gonna tell me to close my eyes, hold my breath, count to ten? I can't see you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nah, nah. But you know, um, I mean, pretty much, yeah. So it's not like I'm not. I don't associate being black with a racial group or or or, or anything like that. It's a it's a way it's a way of thinking. It's a mind frame. But you know what I'm mm. saying. That's so, like, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, word, word. <laughs> so you know, I mean, but like I like like I also say, you know, on Espina's page is that I could also proclaim that in a direct, you know, in a direct manner as well, being you know where I'm coming from, the part of the world I come from, and my family tree. Like I got black people, you know, with people were classified as black people in, directly in my tree. You know what I'm saying? My grandfather and yeah. so on and so forth. You know, my pops is highly melanated and so on and so forth. Yeah, know? yeah, 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 yeah. And then on so, top, go ahead. So, 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 okay, so that's how you identifying. I, I totally agree with you. I totally yeah. agree with you. Yeah. Um, But how should Latin people identify, in your opinion? Well, you know, I, that's very a very hard question to answer because I believe some of them people are Latin. Some of them people are Hispanic. Some of them people... Or like the way I see them, the way I embrace them, like if you got blind hair, blue eyes, like the way I see you, I like nigga, they left you, they left you. You know what I'm saying? You one of us now. That's how I see it. But if you if you want to make that distinction and separate yourself from me, then then you are who you say you are, because I am who I say I am, and I expect you to respect that. So I gotta respect what you say you are. You see what I'm saying? Mm, so if motherfucker okay. talking about he's Spanish, then that's what he is. You know what I'm saying? Especially if he's looking white as hell. And he looking like a Spaniard, then that's what he is. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I really can't say like how we should identify totality as a whole. You know what I'm saying? Like, if like I I, I personally advocate for the unification of the Antilles Islands. I think that's smart for us to do. I think that's my our only shot at independence in Puerto Rico is by unifying with other neighboring islands under yep. one banner. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, like, kind of, I, I kind of uh, feel how Extina feels. It's like, it's we're probably better off doing it on some regional shit. You know what I'm saying? Versus mm. trying to unify all of South America, Central America. Based explain that. Land. Explain that. Break that down. When you uh, when you say regional, what you mean? What I mean is, all right, back in the 1800s, like in the 1840s, 1850s, I think it was, like, uh, like, all right, yo, 
the father the father of Puerto Rican nationalism, he he was Dominican. His father and mother was from Hispaniola. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So this is how you tie this is how you put the pieces of the puzzle together. This is how you tie the like, you know, the cultures together. Like I see no difference in a Cuban and a Puerto Rican and I we, we all the same to me. You know what I'm saying? I literally no difference. You know, genetically, culturally, heritage, it all intertwines. So um the, the this man had an envision. He had an idea of unifying the Spanish-speaking countries. I'd say that you should include Haiti, Jamaica, and the rest of the Antilles Islands under one confederation. They was going to call it the uh, Antilles Confederation. And they were going to, you know, unify as one nation. I think that's the best shot as far as, you know, unification in certain regions. So that would be the Caribbean islands. I call it the Antilles. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha, gotcha, yeah. gotcha, gotcha. Because yeah. the way I see it is that, um, I see that us Latin people, um, just especially here in 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 America, yeah, we have a special culture and a special identity that other groups uh really don't either know or can identify with. You know what I mean? And I feel that um, it's been purposely done to us to for us to have confusion because uh historically they've been identifying us as white ever since the beginning you know what i'm saying um and then That's they, they numbers up well yeah of course and and then mm -hmm. but that causes that causes confusion within us you know what i'm saying because you're gonna mm -hmm. have somebody like david ortiz walking around talking about he's white when he's no white nothing you know what i'm saying yeah. so so when when I when I say that we need to identify as something because they say our ethnicity is not considered a race, but yet there is certain pockets of our neighborhoods that's clearly our neighborhoods like Washington Heights, Spanish Harlem, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and so on, right? Mm -hmm. So since we are not classified as a race and mm -hmm. we're separated by race based on their identification. That, that I see causes a confusion and also causes a division within our own community. So that's why I always advocate just here in the United States that we as Latin people should identify um, or make up our own race to basically, you know, have political power. What do you think about that? I mean, if we're going to continue to go along with the go along, then yeah, sure. I personally... Uh, would advocate for something like that, but if that's how we was moving, then I then I go on code. You know what I'm saying? I don't I don't think we should in engage in their system. I think we should try to redefine it, and you know what I'm saying, try to yeah, dismantle yeah. this whole racial system. I think our whole dynamic will bring a, a, like things to a screeching halt because when we're talking, we're, like things are getting blurred in these lines when we're talking about race, ethnicity, because the thing about Latinos and North Americans, I guess you could say, well, not really because Mexico is technically in North America. So, you know, I guess the United States in particular, Anglo culture versus Spanish culture. Or, or um, that, the Americas, just say the Americas or whatever. Yeah, well, what I'm, well, I'm, sorry, well, the, what I'm trying to say is that there's a different dynamic but the same overall fight as far as race r racial tensions meaning that when, in latin america the way the spanish did it was different you were able to breed yourself out of you know lower classes if you you know throughout the throughout the generations yeah you know versus here this is why i say that they paid attention to the spanish and they seen like all right if you let these motherfuckers mix willy-nilly then Brazil's going to be 80% black. Cuba's going to be 80% black. They started to see that. That's why in the United States, it was illegal to mix the races. So their dynamic is different than ours. So when we come into this racial dynamic in the United States, it's not familiar to us because we were more intertwined with the races. It wasn't, it wasn't illegal for Spanish to marry an indigenous person. It's just that indigenous person wouldn't have the rights that it had until it married. The indigenous, I mean, the, the Spaniard, that's what gives that him the incentive to try to mix in. You know what I'm saying? It, like, all right, we're all victims of our history. It's like, you, you have you noticed, like, I'm not trying to be disrespectful to our women because I love our women. I love all women, you know what I'm saying? But, like, the fact of the matter is, like, Latina women are known internationally as some of the most promiscuous women on the planet. Would you agree with that stereotype? Um, ah, 
Well, I gonna... agree. Well, that's think... the... What I agree, hold on, wait, I gotta think about it. Well, right. I agree with that stereotype as them being the most promiscuous women. No. Well, would you say that they, that is a stereotype that it's like most people view our women like that? Oh, um, no, I don't think so. You don't think so? It, it, I, I don't, I wouldn't, I don't think so because that's like the first time I've ever heard about it. Uh, I've what? heard, no, for real, I'm dead ass. I heard that w girls. Or women in the hood are the most promiscuous ones, black or Latin. So you never heard about all these rich people going to DR, going to all oh, these well, that's countries. Well, di that's different. That's different from from uh, being being told or having the stereotype being more promiscuous. That's different because these these rich white dudes they they're just a bunch of perverts. That's what I heard. You know, I see I heard that stereotype that Europeans go down there just you know to get the nut off. But I haven't heard that you know Latin right, well, women. Well, you know what I'm saying? Then, but that's, again, this is me personally. Uh, probably okay, okay. Uh, some of my people have heard it, you know? Okay, all right. Well, like, all right. All right. I, I feel what you're saying. But um, the point that I was making is that when I, the way I see that is because I understand, like, the history that we went through. It's like, all right, in, when, the, when the Spanish came over, if a woman wanted to be free, all she had to do was be her, his concubine. You understand what I'm saying? It's kind of like, are you like the that's bed true? Witch or that's bed true. Witch? You know what a bed witch is? Yeah, yeah, I know what a bed witch is. Yeah, right? that's true. That was a thing. You know, that's where you get the the, the honky from because the white dudes would come down to the hood because all the, the, the you know Morenas would be selling their pussy. But that's what I'm saying. That's a generational thing that's passed down to us that we learn. It's a survival thing. You know what I'm saying? And, I, and I'm saying I'm associating that right there with current day culture. And our women being ah uh, okay, got it, got it, got it, got it. See, see oh, okay. Saying? Well, well, see, well. The way you broke it down, now that makes more sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not, you know what I'm no, I, and I'm not putting that on nobody because look, yeah, of course, it's always you know what I'm saying you know I'm not you know what I'm saying I'm not trying to. Uh, no, no, uh, I, I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I feel yeah, you. Yeah. I feel so, you. Um, you know, you're not trying to generalize. No, I got yeah, you. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love women, bro. I love yeah. women. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, me and you both, brother. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, so um, let 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 me before I, I I get into um other things. Um, I I heard you speak on uh Tariq Nasheed and I think was it Dr. Umar Johnson. Let me let me just go one by one. What what do you think about Dr. Umar Johnson right now? He looking crazy. He looking crazy. He yeah. Looking real crazy right now. Yeah. Did you donate? Did you donate to his uh? Never, nah, nah, nah. Hell his imaginary no. school. Hell <laughs> no. Uh, unfor I, unfortunately, I did. I I donated. Oh, 50, did you? Yeah, I donated fifty dollars. Uh, um, this is like. Uh, okay. I right, so you this a is, donor? So you a this donor? Is, wow. Are, this are is. Are you getting any feedback? Nah. No. <laughs> okay. um, All right. Uh, again, this hey, is your, your, your this is a, this is a while back. I'm saying 2016. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Uh, yeah. I donated. Um, was it 2016? I think it's a little bit further back than that. But I did donate. I donated fifty dollars, and um, I thought he was gonna do it. And I, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna be real. I was lying to myself, saying, No, 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 he got it. No, 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 he got it. You know what I'm saying? But when the whole stripper thing came out. Saying oh, that so you go that you go that 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 far back with it. Yeah, <laughs> when the whole stripper thing came out, the constant the, stripper. <laughs> yeah, when the whole basketball player stuff I, yo, came I, out. Look, 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 I I wasn't even yo. Even when the stripper thing came out, he ain't lose me. He ain't even lose me when they were uh putting him on blast when the family. Of uh Booker T is it Booker T Washington? He proclaimed no, I think Frederick Douglass. Frederick uh, Douglass yeah. himself, yes, Fred, Frederick Douglass. I, I, yeah. uh, not even when they came, I was like, "Yo, you know, I still wanted to give him a chance." And then, but yeah, for me, was when a dude actually ran up on the school, and then I started. I I, I, I lost grip of him for a while. I was like, I, I never really stayed focused on one, you know, thing anyway. You know, I was probably yeah with something else at that time. But then yeah, yeah, I yeah. visited. I'm like, all right, let me chime in and see what's going on with the school. And then I just, when he opens his mouth, he tell it all. I don't got to believe no YouTuber. I ain't got to believe nothing. I just see it in the man's face. And I just, it, 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 like I say, he's looking crazy. I'm not saying I know something indefinitely. I don't know. You know, maybe he do got something popping, but he's just looking crazy. Yeah. I See, I want to I wanna believe. I, I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to keep it 100% honest. 
I have maybe ten percent, um, ten percent hope that he doesn't know what the fuck he's doing and he's really trying. You yeah, know what I'm see, saying? Did you, did you see him on a guard cast with Lord? With the guard Man, with the guard. this is the reason why I'm saying I got ten percent, bro. You, after, after after that, yo, after you seen that, that ten percent should have went up to like ninety eight, so that'd be like two percent because that, that I don't see yo. The listen, man tried I, to give you some help. The man, he's so the guy. Him. Listen, Umar, Umar said, Umar dead looked in the camera and said, Um, I got was it was a he, he that said that, or was it I don't know who said it, but he said they at they was gonna do the HVAC for free. And I said, No, because I wanted an all black HVAC unit. I said, What yeah, are you see. dumb? Bro, that, that's what I'm saying. That's all fishy, man. That dude takes on some other shit. Yo, and, and, and and now he has like this uh donors club thing. See, yo, I you said, was the first you was the you the first person that I actually spoke to that actually donated to him. So like you know I what I'm I did. So that's I what did. I'm that, that's why when as soon as you told me you donated to him, I asked you, well, is he being transparent with you? Because no. Then they all right, then that says it all right there, Poppy. I'm like hundred percent right there with it. You know what I'm no, saying? Like again, I wanna I wanna give benefit of the doubt, but I'm ninety percent sure he's just full of shit. Word. You know what I'm saying? And it's kind of sad and messed up that he's gonna be he's out here actually like, you know, scamming the community. The fact that he actually said, um, I got a um I got I got somebody trying to buy the school or whatever the case is. Yeah. Oh, uh, what what is your point of even bringing that up? Are you trying to say you're trying to sell the school before it even opens? You know what I'm saying? Well, I think he was trying to make that point was like he was like, well, if it's in such bad condition, then why do I have people trying to buy it for like a million dollars? I think that's what that was coming. From. Yeah, but but they're just trying to buy it just to build something else to benefit them. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's not that because they're gonna keep the school up. You know what I'm saying? Like that right yeah. there. Uh, I don't know, but right, so so what do you think about Tariq Nasheed, bro? I mean, you know, yo, all these dudes, all these dudes, you know what I'm saying? Like, all right, when the Hidden Color series came out, you know what I'm saying? We was all feeling it. Everybody was feeling it. Passing it around, bomb, bomb, bomb. You know, but I never really heard of these dudes before. And, 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 and I walk in circles where it's like we know who's who. You know what I'm saying? So, like. I, I never gonna sit here and say like I like I was a follower of any of these dudes like like I said on her lot I was an admirer of his work and it just baffled me that he was engaging the way he did in such elementary you know in a, such an elementary way like it's such a so it, this argument is so beneath you you know what I'm saying so like it was that was kind of just like the camera that broke the you know back it was just like I right, yo I see what's really going on here because. You go from doing, you know, and I'm, I'm I'm talking about him in particular. If you go from whatever you're doing, selling DVDs, selling your essence on the streets, you know what I'm saying, on the blue b- b- blow horn on 125th, selling your books and you know whatever, <laughs> like Sarnetta, like Sarnetta, whatever, 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 you know what I'm saying, all these dudes, bro. And then they go on the internet, and then like you know, you see, you, you just see how everything just like fall in line. It's like I get it. You, everybody got a business. Everybody got mouths to feed and everything like that. But is it? it it's just too obvious, you know what I'm saying? It's too much of a yeah. of, of a track record of this shit continuously going on. You know what I mean? And it's nothing new, bro. You always got your Teflo dollars. You always got your, your two bit hustlers. A lot of people come in That's the name of you know, knowledge, wisdom, understanding, and they really blood suckers of the poor. They always been amongst us. That's you know true. What I'm so That's it's true. not it's not really surprising to me. Yeah. Like, what what what, what is what are your thoughts on the fact that he uh I, I heard rumors. I'm not too sure about it, but I, this is what I heard: that he invented FBA just to ride the wave of ADOS. Uh, I mean, yo, see, yo, I first heard of ADOS by one of my Haitian brothers down here, and I was building with him. We we was building by 1804, and he's the type of Haitian brother, right? And he was like, yo, but see, I can't fuck with y'all, Rick, cause y'all think y'all white. And da, 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 da. So I started bombing him with a bunch of, you know, information, and he ain't never met a brother like me. So me and him really got connected, and he started telling me about the ADOS. And at first, on the on, on the surface of things, I was trying to explain to him where this energy was coming from. You know what I'm saying? And then when I started doing the knowledge to it, I'm like, yo, 
this shit here just seems like a, like like I was trying to explain explain to uh Extina, you know, a lot of this shit is co tell pro. You know what I'm saying? That's what a lot mm. of this shit that's going on. It's like mm. they don't every to every lie there's a little bit of truth. You see what I'm saying? So like if you study co tell pro, you you would know the tactics. You know what I'm saying? They don't go and disrupt the grassroots organizations no more. They create them. They create all this shit. You know what I'm saying? This is all... This, That's this is like, facts. Yeah. Yeah, bro. So, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, like I was trying to explain to her, you know, I got my formula, the three keys. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I got to... Really, you got to take it back to, you know, to the foundation. You know what I'm saying? With anything you deal with, you got to, you got to, like, be able to dissect that shit. You know what I'm saying? And people's ways and actions speak way more volume than anything. You know what I'm saying? You got to go off the spirit, man. That's it's true. Like, it's That's like, true. especially if you from, if you from, the, if you from the hood, you know what I'm talking about. It's like, y'all could be on the block and somebody who you don't know come in with a certain energy. Everybody's we're going, stuff. Yeah, we're going to check them. We're going to yeah, check them. Yo, yeah. who you, who you came yes. to see? Yes. Who, exactly. Who's the, who, who's vouching for you? Tito? Well, we don't like Tito. He's a snitch. Why, yeah. why are you chilling with, you know what I'm saying? I feel you. Yeah. So, you know, it's really, you really, you know, that, that, that energy, that spirit is really, you're going to tell it all, man. You understand what I'm saying? So, like, I mean, at the end of the day, man, like, you know, I can't deny the man for his works. You know what I'm saying? The hidden Same here. Is, it, it, Same it, here. That's, that's set in stone. You know what I'm saying? That's going to circle the, the, you know, people are going to, you know, get activated from, from, from all that information. So no, same that here. Piece, you know what I'm saying? How you moving now? I can't co-sign none of that. Man. Yeah. Especially. Same here. A lot. See, I don't understand why a lot of people, uh, a lot of people associate me with him. Like you, you hear a lot of people calling me, I'm the Latin Tariq Nasheed. And I'm like, what? Yeah. I didn't, I didn't make, why? Because I say white supremacy all the time. That's because I'm calling it out for what it is, you know. I didn't make no DVDs called Hidden Tacos or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's but, probably what it, that's probably what boils down to is that white supremacy. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, because I constantly talk about it. Well, yeah, because you know we get affected by it. You know, Latin and black people, we both get affected by it, and yeah. I'm just trying to wake our people up. You know, now right. now let me let, let me let me ask you one last question about Tariq because I do I do I, I'm not gonna lie I do have uh, respect for the man. You know, okay. yeah, I yeah. do have high respect for the man, but he isn't high enough for he isn't high enough for me not to criticize. Yeah, if yeah, I yeah, if yeah. I see oh, and that's anybody if I see somebody fucking up, I'm gonna give my point of view one because I did donate to most of his movies, you know? Right. And two is uh, I was somewhat, somewhat of an active uh, listener and follower, but I fell off like a long time ago for other, uh, you know, other reasons or whatever the case is. When I come back, I, I, and I start seeing that he's talking about, you know, the, the immigrants all fucked up. And I'm like, mm -hmm. you know, black folks and all that. I'm like, damn, what the fuck is all this, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, some of his um, past and recent comments about Latin people, I wasn't really feeling. Some of it is true, but some of it is complete, just, you know, a generalization. So what are your thoughts on uh, some of his comments about Latin people? Well, I mean, a lot, like you said, some of what he was saying was true. You know what I'm saying? As far as, you know, like, you know, I, 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 I was breaking it down earlier. He was saying the same shit that I was saying. You know what I'm saying? He just said it in a different tone. In a combative way to to uh to, to the body woman when he was beefing with the body woman, um, as yeah, far as, I made a video I, about that too. Yeah, one, one thing that I caught what he said that just simply wasn't true was he was saying that you know we call ourselves body because we don't want to associate with being black, and that could be anything further from the truth. And I don't understand how you can make that statement. Well, when you got a whole he, country called I A T I A T. Dude, he he he's trying to fit, bro. He's trying to fit a narrative. He also said that the young lords were just a, a small group of radicals. That's another lie. He also well, well, said, now, well, see, now, well, wait, what he, now what, what he was saying with that was, was he was talking about like when she was, I could see this, the, 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 the body woman knew her history. She knew her history. She, yeah. You know what I'm saying? She like, she, she might have she might have spoke inappropriately or whatever the fuck. I, I think she could have worded it a little yeah, bit better. I, me personally, I speak freely. I don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? But like maybe she ruffled some feathers. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. You know what I'm saying? But what I do know is that um damn, hold on, my bad, bro. I just lost my train of thought, son. Like I has bugged out. 
No, it's all good. Uh, the, I was talking about the Young Lords and how he said oh, that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so what he was referring to was pretty much the overall, like, um, spirit of the country, which is true because after, like, the 60s, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was just, like, short little radical groups. Like, you had, like, the PBA, the Popular Boricua Army. You had, like, the Machicheros. And these niggas was wild boys. Like, they would go around. They were responsible for over 128 bank robberies in the United States alone. They used to go blow up buildings. There's a dude named Willie uh, 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 Willie Morales. They call him Three Wing, uh, Three uh, Three Finger Willie. He's a refugee in Cuba. They broke him out of jail when they broke Asada Shakur out of jail. You know, so this is back ah. in the day when niggas was really on that shit. Ah. They were really radical. You know what I'm saying? They were really yeah. doing some crazy shit. You know what I'm saying? So like, that's what he's referring to. He was just like, yeah, he know, because he know our history too. Because I, because because yeah, but but the, but the before. thing is, but the thing is how he misrepresented the young lords. He said that the young lords were just a small group of radicals, which is is not true. You know, I mean, they, 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 they had they, they had they run. They were they were. Nah, they had no, bro. They were pretty big, bro. They had their numbers. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know, but numbers, but the yeah, way yeah. but the way he 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 said it was kind of. I was like, dude, don't don't do that. Now you're trying to be like, uh, be you know, be, funny. Be little, be yeah, because I, all all I'm saying is all I'm saying is if the young lords were so small, they would have never been in those, that those Cointel Pro documents. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? If they were know, so small, like, come on, let's know, keep it real. You know the young, you know, you know the young, um, the L young lords was pretty much though, like, like an offshoot of, like, it was like an affiliate, an alliance of oh, the Black, Black Panthers. Panthers. Yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. They, see, but that's the, that's see, like, all right, like the, the original Black Panthers, that was some grassroots shit. You know what I'm saying? This the neo Black Panthers, I don't really know too much, but those are two different things. Those are two different entities. Gotcha. You know what I'm gotcha. But like, but like, I, I feel what you're saying, but but me personally, like, like trying to like detach my emotions from what he was actually saying, I do believe that that's what he was trying to get at. Was like, you know, like the yeah, you had a few Puerto Ricans yeah. out doing that crazy shit, but yeah. most of y'all niggas was on some other shit, and which yeah. is technically true because. We was banging out like in the civil rights movement and shit like that, but a lot of niggas got bought off at, in that time frame. But you can't put that all on us because y'all niggas did the same thing. You know yeah, what I mean? yeah. Y'all pastors did what they yeah. did, and niggas yeah. shut the fuck up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's why I don't like people throwing, you know, uh, rocks in glass house. Yeah. Like, see, like, see, this is this is the thing. Um, I I I stay on code all the time. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I don't like going against victims of white supremacy, but when some of my people fall out of, out, out of line, I go and pull their coat. You feel me? I go mm -hmm. check them. That's why I got tons of videos about Antonio Batista. That's the yeah. why. That's why I debated some of these people. You know what I'm saying? So, right. you know, when my when my people, you know, fall out of line, I gotta go. You know, check them. Now, when black folks with some following. Yeah. Start saying some dumb bullshit about my community. I feel like I gotta represent and be like, nah, I gotta check you on that. Some of the shit you said was true. Some of the shit you said that wasn't true. You know what I'm saying? I feel yeah. like I gotta go do that because if I say something fucked up or wrong, they'll do the same thing. You know what I'm saying? So I, yeah. you know, you got you got you got to also be careful with that though, because sometimes you can fall in the line uh in the lines of like tribalism. You know what I'm saying? That's like, true. I, That's true. No, no, like, you're right. You're right. And, and then also, you also gotta understand what I also what I build on. Um, when I said, you know, never argue with a fool because from a distance you can't tell who is who. Now, it, you know, ain't nothing wrong. Like, see, like, like I talk my shit and I, I'll let you know what 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 I think about the situation. But I I wouldn't get involved. With any you know combative situation with Tariq Nasheed on the internet, because whether he see it or not, that's my brother. You know what I'm saying? That's whether true. He, whatever he decide to do is what he decide to do. And like it's either one like the way I see it, see that like a you falling victim to tribalism, b you doing some devious shit for the bag, or, or or c you just you know that's pretty much the only two things that I can see really happening here with that man. You know what I'm saying? So either, yeah, either, either yeah. Which way, either which way, me personally, I'm not gonna engage in that in that fashion I, I i'll speak what i you know how i feel about it because he's made that public knowledge and he's putting it out there to the world but me personally i ain't gonna go against that man 
because he, you know, he, I, you know, I, I've dealt with that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying that I want to go against him or anybody else. But what I'm saying is, is that I'll correct somebody. You know what I'm yeah, saying? You know, and I, and I, you know, and I'm gonna definitely do it respectfully, regardless of of uh, any type of emotions and stuff. But let me right. now, let me ask you something, bro. Yeah. Uh, what, what made you get knowledge of self? Because the the way you spoke in Xtina's channel and 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 seeing you engage and speaking um you got a lot of knowledge and and i'm mad you don't got a youtube channel or a podcast and all that because yeah, I, I, I i feel i feel like i'm sorry to say but i feel like you you're doing us a disservice for not bringing that the light the seed right. of light that you have right. to the people you know what i'm saying yeah. so what made what made you start this journey of of enlightenment yeah yeah well uh first and foremost so i feel what you're saying you know what i'm saying um but what i deal with son is more or less it, 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 it it's uh it's something that you gotta walk and talk you know what i'm saying i i got I, I stay on the job i teach everywhere i go it's my duty as a civilized person to teach or i wouldn't be doing you know what it is that i seeked out to do in the first place you know what i'm saying so um but you, you, as far as a wider audience and, you know, adding on into the conversation, that's why I, I, I've lately been coming out of my shell on the social media. Like, let me see what this is really about because it's it's a wave. Every, you know, it's taking over. Every, everybody's hopping on it. You know what I mean? Um, but as far as why I wanted to, like, what inspired me to get into it and all that, really, it, I, I attribute it back to my uncle when I was nine years old when it, it inspired me to want to wanna be like Dr. Federal Campos, the man who spoke seven languages, he was an intelligent person, you know what I'm saying? He defied the odds, you know what I'm saying? And then as I got older, you know, um, I just didn't feel comfortable in the current culture in which I was being brought up in. I didn't, it didn't resonate with me, you know? And then um, when the towers fell, when the towers fell, um, we had left, you know what I'm saying? We had went down to Charlotte, North Carolina. Which was, you know, uh, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, as a big black population, and yeah. um, and I was wilding. I was, I was, I was wilding. I was on some, you know, robbing, stealing, doing devious things. Um, but I always remember from back in New York, you know, hearing about the Zulus, hearing about five percenters, Latin kings, and all these other, you know, what I'm saying people who stood on something. And I always admired that, you know what I mean. And then, you know, also when I was a youth. Of course, Malcolm X, seeing that movie, like Spike Lee, you know what I'm saying? That right there blew my mind. And then the first thing I did was I read the, I didn't read the whole thing, um, but I read half of the autobiography of Malcolm X, you know what I'm saying? Then when I, you know, as, I, as I'm out there wilding now, you know, all the brothers see me, see what I was doing, but they, they also see my passion for learning, you know, because I was actually diagnosed dyslexic in kindergarten. So, oh shit! Same here. Yeah, me too. And I never graduated high school. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. the way I see it is, the schools failed me, but the streets yeah. they saved me. They, same they're, here. The one, they're the ones who who honed in on my passion for learning and my passion for education. They seen it in me. The public school systems did it. You know what I'm saying? So they were on a job as civilized people. They see this young man here wilding out. You know what I'm saying? And he has a thirst for knowledge, you know, because I, I remember this one dude, the first dude that I started, you know, getting it from, he was actually a Nuwabian, you know, and um, I don't know if you're familiar with them dudes, you know what I'm saying? Nah, but, I'm, I'm familiar with the with the five percenters and uh, and the uh, uh, Israelites. Okay, all right. Um, well, he was actually a Nuwabian, this dude. That's, they're very high, heavy into, like, comedic science and, you know. Okay, like, okay, okay. You never heard of a, a man named Dr. Malakazi York? Of course, of course, they locked them up. And yeah, all that's, that. Yeah. That, yeah, that was his people. So I was learning. Oh, people. I, actually, okay. I actually, as much as mysterious as that man is, he was actually my first teacher because he's the one who got me into the realm of all this. You know, what I'm saying? but I couldn't get with that. That was awesome. Other yeah. shit. Even though them brothers there, I give it to them though. They shocked. You know, they were saying? like they were like the 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 modern version of the 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 Israel not the Israelites um. Uh, 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 Malcolm X people, what, what the name? The Nation of, uh, Islam. Nation of Islam. There you well, go. You remember, well, before he died, he left the Nation of Islam, but he was gonna come back. You know, that story right yeah. there is very controversial. 
That's yeah, the yeah, yo, they, they, I, th- I think, I think, yo, uh, um, Malachi Z York, I think they, they, they fucked him over, bro. Well, the I mean, you know, see, I, you know, see, he got 135 years. I, I don't, I don't know what the hell. Which happened. is wild, bro. It's wild. How you get that much time, though? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like for taxes? Come on, bro. Where, where, where he fucked up at? Where he fucked up at was, he, he was trying to, he, he didn't want to incorporate. What he was doing was a beautiful thing. You know what I'm saying? But um, he didn't want to incorporate, and he was sloppy with it, yo. He let somebody else do the books, and they, f- they found a loophole. You know what you're what you doing going down. You could do that in Brooklyn, in New York, wherever you're, upstate New York, where he was doing it at. But the moment you went down to Georgia, you already know what time it is. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. like, he should have been, like, you know, really pristine with his yo, shit. Yo, my man owned planes. He owned a yo, that building. Man, that, man, that man got over 135 physical children on this planet. And, yeah. <laughs> you know, and the thing is, bro. See, the thing is, man. Like, you know, like they, them, them type of, yo, absolute power corrupts, man. You know what I'm saying? Anytime, you yeah, get yeah, yeah. With that much power, bro, you, you don't know what it is to, to have that much power. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so like, I, listen, I, I, I've been trying to talk to somebody that's been part of that or whatever the case is because. To me, that shit, wow. Like, how you get a hundred something years for taxes, bro? For well, I mean, taxes? I mean, there's no, there's, there's no secret. Yeah, you know, they railroad his ass. You know what I'm saying? Like, what, but like my, my question is, what do you expect? You go knowing what you went up against. The only yeah. ones who were really successful with it was really the Nation of Islam because you had the Prophet Yahweh Ben Yahweh down in Miami doing the same thing. Oh yeah. That was black They had their own communities. They had. They had their own transportation system. Now, wasn't didn't he get locked up because uh he was part of a murder or something like that? Bro, they were bro, dumb dudes did not play down there, bro. Yeah, they were catching bodies. Yeah, I mean I don't know the exact uh, extent of why he got locked up. I just yeah, know, but same I, here. I know it because you hear it in, in, in circles. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But, yeah, um, apparently like he killed some of his members or something like that. This is what I'm hearing. I don't know how true it is, but well, I mean, yo, you know what I mean? When, like when you, something you, about that and 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 uh, get, they bought buildings and shit. When so you get up, when you get in that mind frame, bro, when you go that radical, when you go that left, man, like you got remember that's like a whole regime right there. It's like if you kill true. somebody in the United States, the state will kill you. You know that's, what I'm saying? So yeah. these people assume that power. They assume that's true. that sovereign power, so they they feel like, all right, well, I got my own people here. We got our own religion. We got our own. They feel like you know they take matters into their own hand. They ain't calling the police. They feel <laughs> like being done. They going they going do what they do. That is you know? true. That is yeah. true. So 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 uh, again, like, how, so you got into this knowledge yeah. um, from a young age, and 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 then yeah. from from there, what what started like opening your mind? Like, damn, this shit is crazy. Like. Everything is a lie that they told me. Like, like what, what happened? I mean, really just, you know, the art of, you know, studying and researching and the passion for learning and things of that nature. When, when you really dig into this, when you really, you know, like, see, what a lot of people do, bro, is they pander to their own ego. And, you know, what you have now is a lot of what they call YouTube scholars. You got a lot of people who go on YouTube, watch, you know, yep. YouTube historians. Yeah, yeah, YouTube historians, you know? yeah. And what they do is they, they fall into an algorithm because they cater to their own ego. Meaning so if you go on if you go like and you all you research is Rush Limbaugh and you know Alex Jones and all this, you know, right wing left shit, whatever the fuck it is that you want. That's what's gonna come up on your feed and your timer. That's what's gonna be promoted to you because that's your algorithm. And everything yeah. that you come across is gonna cater to your. You're gonna be in the bubble. Whatever it is, yeah. You know, and it goes both left and right. You know what I'm saying? So as a kid, it was just like you know, you're learning all this information, and it's like it's it's just fun. The whole process of trying to you know put the pieces of the puzzle together, cross referencing. You know, what I'm saying oral tradition, talking to your elders, talking to people. You know, getting that, you know, who are actually there in the ground for, you know, whatever. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, so it just became like a, a sport to me. It's like, it's an old saying. It's like, use your tongue as your sword. You know what I'm saying? So everything mm. you got, see, like, I right, in the 5%, what they got, it, what we got is something called, you know, uh, 120. You know what I'm saying? And you're supposed to learn 120 verbatim. It's a cultural practice. You know what I'm saying? Because what you're doing when you're learning things verbatim, you know what I'm saying? Is you you're practicing repetitional studies. It's like exercising your brain. 
You know what I'm saying? So that way, when you come in contact yeah. with somebody and they trying to, you know what I'm saying, pull a fast one over on you, you know, you equipped with all the tools it is to take that person on intellectually. You know what I'm saying? Because that's, that's using your tongue as your sword. So it was always like, it, you know, it was always like you got to get it because you never know when you could be caught out here, somebody tugging your coat, pulling your card, and you're not who you say you are. You know what I mean? Mm. So, so wait a minute. So, are you are you a five percenter? Yeah, I'm a five percenter in the sense as I bear witness to the reality of man. I assume the responsibilities of a civilized person to teach uncivilized people, um, and I'm a practitioner in the culture of high God. So, mm. but but you know, you have you know, um, even within that, yo, see, the five percent nation is not designed to be a religion but some people could manifest it as a religion you mm. know what i'm saying so okay. you have certain cultural custom practices that i may personally not engage in you know what i'm saying so like like I strippers not, <laughs> not, no i'm just talking about like you know we got cultural practices like where every last sunday of the month we meet up it's called the universal parliament you know what I'm saying? i may not participate in that you know or requirement of a five percenter especially for somebody who's been doing as long as i have is to have your lessons on cap. You know, you know it verbatim. I don't have it on cap. So, you know, I come in contact with my brother because I probably get a tongue lashing for that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that's, what, that's what I mean. It's like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, this is my culture. This is how, you know, this, this is the, the, the uh, this is what I'm rooted in. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. You know, we all, we, we, we all could do better. You know what I'm saying? It's like gotcha, Christian gotcha, gotcha. To church every Sunday or whatever. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So, so do you know your mathematics? Yeah, I know that. Yeah. Yeah, ah, yeah. So, so okay. What? Mathematics. <laughs> what, what, what? Mathematics, alphabet, one to ten. I know, you know. I, yeah, 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 like yeah. Do said, you, like, you know the one to ten? You know the one to ten? The, I think was yeah. it knowledge? Uh, uh, nah, was nah, it? No, no, nah, one to ten is is a science. No, 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 you talk about supreme mathematics, but yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. That's what I was yeah, talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's supreme mathematics. Yeah, but now, nah, um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, nah, you know, I got certain lessons on cap. I got certain things on cap, but. As far as somebody who's in my age, I'm 32, I'm 33, part of stuff. I just turned 33. I'm 33, uh. I'm 33 years old, so I should be more sharper with it. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I, should be, I, I, should have, I should have it on cap at this point. You know what I'm saying? But that's mm -hmm. something that I go through with my brothers. You know what I'm saying? That they're uh. the ones who are going to be able to tug my coat and scrutinize. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, okay. okay. So I, call, I can't call you next week and be like, yo, what's your math matter, God? Nah, 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 nah. nah. <laughs> that, I mean, it's not that, you know, it's not like we can steal that because we're very open about our teachings, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But there's certain things that's reserved for the five percent. You know what I'm saying? Ah. Like we'll, we'll teach anybody 120, but if you're not gonna walk and talk, if you're not gonna go through what what all of those before you have went through and you're gonna show and prove that this is what you yeah. think about, then we're not gonna we're not gonna take it there. We will still teach you, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, you know, not everybody's designed to be a five percent. You know now now why why did um why did certain people from the dominant society i'll just say the dominant society mm -hmm. why certain people from the dominant society labeled the five percent of the gang because a lot of the brothers back in the 60s was coming out of that you know what i'm saying and we was heavy in the prisons you know what i'm saying so and and, and all right I, you watch flip the script yeah of course you have you watched the blood stories in the latin kings when uh benny went on there and when pastor benny and Cano, the spanish dude yeah, yeah, I, I see. I seen that one. I didn't see the bloods one. So people well, were telling gotta, me, the people were telling blood. me the, the the blood the blood one was like mad dumb or blood. or emotional or nah, whatever nah, the case nah, is. Nah. Yo, you got yo, them dudes is wild boys who've been in prison for a while. They got but them stories is essential to the history of what we about to get into. You know okay, okay, so, okay, okay. Them bloods, them bloods, them bloods right there. Them them are babies. They they, they were born out of the five percent because when in the eighties. Yeah. The five percent was one in the jail. Everybody was a five. Even you know the bodies, the, the mad body five percent. Some of the original born in Medina were five percenters. You know, what I'm saying? yeah, bodies. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but yeah, hip hop, yeah. we was there from the beginning too. You know what I'm saying? So, but what I'm saying is, is that what, what was happening was a lot of brothers was wilding and they were fucking. You know, like what happened? It was a wave of Puerto Rican niggas coming from the island and niggas was getting locked up. So every time Poppy and them would get locked up, they just sent for more niggas on the island because there was so much work coming in in the 80s. It was, so, it was like crazy. You know what I'm saying? So you had a big influx of a bunch of Puerto Rican niggas who didn't speak no fucking English, who were getting in jail with, a, with, 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 with 
in in the New York scene, and they were, you know, niggas was getting them. They were food. You know what I'm saying? So what happened was that the guards were telling them, no, we got to chill out with this. These are people. We can't be, you know, wild. And some of them niggas wasn't with it. So they went rogue. And then you had what they became, oh, you know, the, God the, body. And then you had it. niggas who became, you know. Wait, is that NYC. the reason? Is that the reason why in that interview they said there was the righteous ones and the exactly. reckless ones? Exactly. exactly. Oh, exactly. So okay, Jamal, okay, they, okay. They came, they were born out of us because we told them to chill. If you're going to do it, you got to do that somewhere else. So they did. And they, got it, they got it, got out, it. That's, they what, came out for blood. that's why they came for blood. That's why they said that the righteous one would, would, would teach you how to build mm-hmm. and, and knowledge yourself. The, 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 the reckless ones was the ones wilding and doing all that other dumb but shit. Only that, but not only that, but when 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 a law came and he started teaching the, the 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 babies in Harlem, you know what I'm saying? See, before a law started teaching the lessons, you could only get them through Supreme Wisdom, which is a book written by Elijah Muhammad. And you had to be in the mosque to get that. You know what I'm saying? Ah. So once a law left the mosque, he put them lessons out to the streets, and all the babies got them. And a lot of these dudes was in gangs, and they were coming from a gang-like mentality. That's why Allah says some of y'all need refinement. You know what I'm saying? But in the fifth degree of the Supreme Mathematics, you got power refinement. But originally, it was just power. But some dudes was wilding so much, they didn't need that refinement. And that's a that's a debate with amongst ourselves. Oh, it's power. No, it's power refinement. And that goes back and forth because, you know, yeah. that's yeah, 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 something yeah, yeah, that yeah. we discuss amongst ourselves. But, yeah, so, you know, it's just... You, it, it's, it's certain certain uh, states label it as a gang. Like uh, most states that I've lived in, like I live in Florida, so yeah. you know what I'm saying if I'm flying my universal flag, they could probably say that's gang curve familiar. Yeah, because uh, that makes sense because um, I think was it the the five percent uh got adopted by uh, the five of uh, the was it the, the the five stars of the blood, right? Nah, all, nah, son. It didn't. So it didn't all these dudes, a lot of that knowledge comes from us. The whole Yo, it, it, nah, son. Our shit, go, okay. our shit predates all that. You know what I'm saying? Like they, what happened was with the Bloods, what happened in New York and the Crips in New York. A lot of that shit got came from Chicago. That's a lot of their history and they let literature over there with the Vice Lords and the Peace Stones. Because you had a dude named Jeff Fort who was down with the Peace Stones, went out to California, and he started his own set out there. Who became Blood? You know what I'm saying? See, right. way, see, Chicago gangs. In New York, I mean, in LA gangs, and when they came to New York, they pretty much fused the two. So if you were a vice lord and you bang under the five and you red, you probably associate that with the blood. So a lot of New York bloods adopted that literature, but they don't do that shit out west. Uh, they don't do that shit in other parts of the country. You go to Little Rock, Arkansas, my homie was from out there, and he was a blood nigga. He ain't know nothing about what the fuck we was talking about when we was talking about the bloods and the, the literature. And, nah, he ain't know because he's a west side blood. He's, he's from... Even in Jersey, a lot of the like Newton, like the Bloods and Crips in Newark, like a blood would kill another blood for being a New York blood because real niggas from California went to Jersey and set up shop, and them niggas is connected. They don't do the same thing. It's different. It's intertwined with. Uh, but ain't none, that, ain't none of that. Ain't none. Ain't none of their lessons. I mean, I don't know. I haven't really, you know, I've read some shit. Like I, I've, you know, some people show me their shit, but I see the similarities and how they get like a lot of they inspiration from us but ain't nothing we ain't fall under nothing but to universal flag we we are really true living god so nah we won't fall under none of them banners no five point star no six point star that's all chicago shit that's dealing with latin kings vice lords latin kings and vice lords they're under the same umbrella the alliance called the people alliance so anybody who bang the five uh, that's the people yeah. alliance anybody who bang under the six is folk that's your GDs. That's uh, all the other dudes. But see, you got some of them dudes. Yeah, like you got GDs. peoples and your folks. Yeah, okay, yeah. I got you. But they, but they're just alliances. Those are not gangs. They're alliances of different, you know, gangs. But you got certain gangs like. Or, and, and the Latin Kings were under that five, right? Yeah. The uh, Latin Kings, but their history goes all the way back to the forties. Okay, Latin got Kings it. In Chicago, all the way back right? To the 40s, in Chicago, yeah. And in New York, it only go back to like I think like the late late eighties, early nineties yeah. when King when King Blood came came. Yeah, back. yeah, 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 yeah. I think, was, uh, I think in that in that interview, I learned a lot about the Bloods and I mean the, the Blood of uh, King Blood and all that. Yeah, my people's was King, so you know I, I'm real you know close to that history, and I I, I remember you know them yeah. being around the way when, in, in the late nineties and shit like that. Yeah. So now, yeah. now before we, before we wrap it up and all that, you know, um, like 
before we wrap it up, um, let me yeah. let me just ask you a few more questions. Um, what 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 do you think about Black and Latin people uniting as as one to dismantle this system called white supremacy? I mean, you know, that's the best shot. Powers and numbers. You know what I'm saying? So. You know, there's going to be some who do it, some who don't. Some who fall in line, some who don't fall in line. You know, and then you're going to have all the, the 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 tribalism in between. You know, in order for us to get rid of the system, we all have to unanimously stop identifying with the system. You know what I'm saying? Like, like my thing is this, man. You know, I study etymology. I study the root of words. And I study linguistics. I study language and how they're structured. And one thing that I know is that anytime you put an ism behind something, it indicates that it's a system. You know what I'm yeah. So yeah. when yeah. you talk about capitalism, that's a system. Communism yeah. is a system. So racism is a system. So anybody who adheres to that system is technically a racist. Does it make you a prejudice yeah. person? Yeah. Does it make you you hate people? But if you're saying you black, you white, you this, you that, and you identify with that infrastructure, you are a racist because you are here to that system. Just like I'm a capitalist because I go to the grocery store and I buy groceries and I engage in commerce. I'm a capitalist by practice. Maybe not by ideal, but I do it because that's the system I live in. You see what I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, until we all come together and decide to stop, you know, identifying as crayons, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Then this, uh-huh. is how, this is how it's going to be. You know, we could, we could, we could link up with you know our brothers and then you know have this powerful ass alignment. But then there's going to be some fraction within that eventually, and it's going always going to be the niggas who don't perform or who don't get down, and we're going to have to go to war with them. And it's just going to be overall, overall, and overall. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, that's how, I, that's how I see it. But you know, at the end of the day, like when you talk about you know, like I, I don't feel like a guest in the home of hip hop or black culture or anything like I'm home. This is my people's, you know what I'm saying? That's, so I don't feel like I gotta, you know, um, try. I don't gotta try. To yeah. It, or it just is what it is. Yeah. You know yeah, I mean? yeah. 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 That's, that's, that, yeah. That's, that's facts. Damn bro. bro. Spending that now. Listen, I'm telling you, bro, you, you, it's mad easy. Go to your Instagram, go live, maybe do it once a week or whatever the case is and just spit this shit, bro. Yo, 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 just, if you stay in tune with me, bro, if you, you and Xtina, y'all stay in tune with me, y'all keep encouraging me, because y'all inspire me, you know what I'm saying? If yeah. y'all stay on my ass, I'll, I, I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm still, I, I'm still going to do it, but y'all might make me do it quick. Listen, I'm going to I'm gonna DM you literally every day, be like, yo, you doing it? Yo, you doing it? Cause you, bro, cause I'm telling you, yo, you, you, I can see that, bro, you are light, you know what I'm saying? Word, and word. It, it, it's... It's I don't it's baff bro it's baffling to me that that you don't want to share this knowledge, yeah. you know to people you know but with but me and Tina we're doing our, our thing to to bring your voice out to the masses. Yeah yeah, yeah. I appreciate y'all yeah, y'all doing good works man you know there's there's nothing you know I, I admire y'all works man so yeah 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 good looking so yeah. so tell the people where they can find you bro. Uh, self styles um on Instagram um that's pretty much about it at this point <laughs> you know. Yeah, on Instagram because he's gonna start uploading live, uh, live uh, discussions. You know what I'm saying, and giving yeah. people this work and all that. But listen, self, so, yo, right. thank you for coming through, man. I much appreciate it. Thank you for having me. And, and um, you want to you want to leave some uh, some affirmations to the people? Um, I mean, you know, just peace to all human families of the planet Earth, man. You know, and you know, shout out to me, gente. Shout out to my peoples. You know what I'm saying? I just want to send positive vibrations to everybody in the universe. You know, that's what I'm on. All right. That's what's up. That's what's up. All right. Well, everybody listening, I'm going to catch y'all later. Peace. Peace. All right. That was Self Styles. Wonderful brother. Um, You know, very informative. Um, Somebody that I believe everybody should be listening to, to be completely honest. Um, I'm a, I'm a, I'm going to even take it one step further. I believe he's more woke than me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> he's more, there's level to wokeness. You know what I'm saying? There's level to wokeness. And I think he's on, on the, the God, the God level seven, number seven. No, let me stop. Um, but definitely, definitely guys go check him out. His, uh, Instagram link will be down 
below. I hope you guys enjoyed this interview. I hope you guys learned a lot from this interview. Um, Styles was spitting things that I completely forgot all about or didn't know about. So shout out to Styles. Um, you know, I definitely want you guys to replay this interview over and over again so you guys can actually learn certain things that he was putting out in the universe. Now, with that being said, if you guys want to support the podcast and your boy, donate to my website, RadicalLatino.com. Donate. It's a donate tab or cash app dollar sign Radical Latino. Or if you guys can't do it monetary, COVID got everybody messed up. I totally get it. What you guys can totally do is rate this podcast five estrellas. That's a... Uh, that's indigenous for stars. No, <laughs> five stars. And also go to my YouTube channel, watch this episode on YouTube and all that. And, you know, and I'll get monetizing. I'll get a kickback from it. You know what I'm saying? Um, also, if you want your comments read, remember this. If you want your comments read, go to my YouTube channel under this episode 114. Write down your comments and I'm definitely going to read it next week. You know what I'm saying? So. So we could definitely do this thing. With that being said, I know everybody should know my catchphrase, but I'm going to say it anyways. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to say it anyways. I'd rather die on my feet than live on my knees. With that being said, I'm going to catch y'all later. Peace.